before the habit roll call, I kind of just want to talk real fast about bouncing back from the vacation. I ate a ton of sugar. I had a lot of alcohol. I didn't sleep well. Uh, I still tried to balance all of those things with continually training every day and going on walks and eating healthy. Uh, but all of those things are just so toxic that it was hard to handle, and it's been a you know it took me a few days to bounce back. And I want everybody to, else to, out there to see that this is a normal thing for people, and that when you bounce back, it's about actually bouncing back instead of just bouncing and letting your ball deflate. So I wanted to go over the things that I see physiologically that people may not be seeing when they go on vacation. So number one, the number one thing with vacation is circadian rhythms. If your sleep cycles get out of whack, then that means you're not going to get the deep REM cycles that are required to clean your brain out and to actually allow you to sleep better. You're not going to get the right proper amounts of melatonin and you're not going to clean the brain out and then therefore you're going to be running in less than desirable brainwave states which means less serotonin less dopamine which means more depression and when you have more depressive mentality and neurochemistry going on that means that you have less desire to move physically and so it's actually harder to move so that's the first thing we see from vacation uh, number two, eating sugar constantly. I was eating Snickers bars like every day. I'm not going to lie. I love candy. I love Snickers. I don't eat stuff like that regularly in my regular lifestyle. But when I'm on vacation, sometimes it's time to indulge. Well, eating the candy like that regularly plus drinking, you know, Guinnesses. Um, I had enchiladas. I had yeah, – I even stopped at the candy store in Barstow and got some caramel-covered chocolate. You know, I really went in. So – uh, all of that influx of sugar, even though I was moving a lot, was degrading my system and causing inflammation. I could feel it was harder to move. My joints were stiff. Just wasn't feeling well in my movement patterns. So again, people live like this habitually every single day their entire life. And I don't think that they understand that it's really like driving your car with like sand or in your gasoline tank or like a potato in the exhaust pipe. You're not running at full capacity. And so these you know, harsh sugars, the not sleeping, the, the circadian rhythms getting thrown off, the dehydration, the severe dehydration. I was out there at 106 degree heat. All of these things I want you to realize for yourself. If these are things that are normal in your life, meaning your circadian rhythms are thrown off, you're abusing sugar. You're not getting full depth of sleep or allowing your body to reset. If you're continually living that lifestyle, your body is actually living in a depression. Uh, it's not mental. It doesn't mean I have depression, right? It means that your body's nervous system, all of the electrical chemical wiring that goes through your body, it actually goes sluggish and slows down. That happens from all of the things I just talked about. Poor sleep, poor circadian rhythm, poor nutrition, you know, too much sugar, too much alcohol, on, on everything being in a disrupted cycle. All of those things are causing a body depression, which makes you crave more sugar, which makes you want to just lay around and be lethargic, and it gives you no energy. You know, it makes it harder to want to move. So I think a lot of things that I see with my clients and people around is that their biology is in a depressive state, and that the way to alleviate that is to get yourself out moving and walking and cleaning out your body from those toxic chemicals like sugar. I know it's things you hear, but when you understand really why you want to do it, it's much easier to flip the switch and jump right back into the mode you want to be in. So if you think about it, if it's, you're finding it's hard to maintain motivation and you're finding it hard to maintain you know, the cravings that keep coming on, then really potentially step back and ask yourself, is my body in a depressive state? And is there something I can do to excite my body? Like move it more, dance more, you know, get in cold water, uh, get your body fired up. What's going to adrenalize you, okay, without having to use substances or alcohol. Okay, we're going to go into the habit roll call now. The world famous habit roll call. Alrighty, we're here with the habit roll call, roll call, <laughs> roll call. 
the old gal's still loading up is what I was going to say. So we're waiting for her to load. Here we go. We're checking in for the roll call. My check-in yesterday was a little odd, so I don't think some people saw it. I saw check-ins from different places, so I'm just going to read off all the different areas that I can find. So Evelyn checked in. She said she worked out with a trainer from Gold's Gym online last night, had to stop after about 20 minutes. Wasn't that hard of a workout, but my left leg started hurting me too much. I was able to still get in my stretches. Kettlebell swings and clean and lifts today, but only did 10 of each of the hip exercise. The trainers post live workouts daily. I've been trying to do some every night. We'll do it again today. Hopefully, I can do a little more each day. Boom. All right, Miss Evelyn. If your leg is bothering you too much with those um, fitness classes, perhaps dial it back a little bit. I'm concerned with your leg. You said you've been in pain a lot lately. Um, you may want to get that checked out. And then for the... Uh, you only did 10 of each of the hip exercises. I noticed that went down. So I'm just curious if it's because the hip is bothering you. Um, those stretches are probably going to really help you out with that hip issue. So it's something you want to stay consistent with. Samantha, day 44, had school, then off to work. I had some downtime at work, so I ran and walked up and down the hallways. Wow. Yes, yes. Mm. <laughs> All right. Round of applause to you. Thank you, Miss Samantha, for checking in with your uh, extremely diligent and consistent work. It shows I have a feeling you're going to be seeing some good results from it. Brian Warren, we did our shoulder pulls and stretches and a walk. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, didn't get to see you guys yesterday. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Jonathan Hernandez had a shitty day. Two donuts. Whoa, but I'm okay. I did a good workout, though. That's got to count for something. Well... We do know that the working out and the, and the um, you know, being consistent with your workout does count for something. You know, it counts for everything, being consistent. That being said, I make this mistake sometimes, and I've seen other people do it. So just like to reiterate, we don't want to conflate the two, you know, by saying because I ate these donuts, working out is what's going to alleviate that. You know, they're two different systems that are running in harmony together, but really to stay consistent to eat, to diet, uh, and consistent to training, they shouldn't have, you know, like, because I did good here, I, this affects this here. There are two systems that constantly just need to be worked on at getting better at. So keep that in mind. But I know, Jonathan, that you are doing fantastic. Um, the sugar stuff has been a constant battle, so maybe we should just talk about that some more. Baron Adams I got up at 5.30. My body said sleep. So for once in quite some time, I listened. No workout, extra hour of sleep. However, I got home from work, and my body would not let me miss the squats. At this point, my body knows I need my squats. So out to the gym I went, and I got my 17 squats in. Eating was a 9 out of 10. Weight was 200. Baron is the perfect example. Oh, yeah. Of how a habit is formed and why we're doing it and what it's all about. So if we see here, even though he skipped out on his morning training, which, you know, as consistent as Baron is, I mean, that's not even skipping. That's just him taking a well-needed nourishment break. But the fact is he said that he couldn't help. His body knows that he has to go get the squats, and so he went and did the 17. And so that's what this is about. You know, Baron wasn't a guy who was squatting every day. Baron didn't ever squat before I met him. Um, you know, and no, there does ninety nine percent of the population, right? We got to get that booty working. So it's beautiful to see Baron falling into the habit, and I know that you all can do it as well by sticking to it and getting the job done. And the way that we do that is by finding the joy behind the process. Work is play. Because all of the studies show when you're having fun while you're doing exercise or physical demanding tasks that you emit different chemicals. I just read something so interesting. They, they said in the book, that uh, The Joy of Movement uh, by Kelly McGonigal. I love the book so far. Uh, in The Joy of Movement, they said that human sweat smells different if it's a happy person's sweat versus a sad person's sweat, that the sweat actually has a different smell. So there's a happy sweat smell. So think about that. Your brain really changes everything on how you perceive things. So if you're working out and you're happy, you're actually going to emit different chemicals which are tied with oxytocin and the love chemical, and you can fall in love with training just like a person can fall in love with drugs. So think about that. 
when you are training today or tomorrow. Try not to grind up your face too much. Try to smile while you train, and it's going to make a difference on your performance. I'll guarantee that. All right, everybody. I'm trainer Steve. This has been another Stick to It Momentum Morning Habit Check-In Roll Call, whatever you want to call it. Put the banana on the ice cream. We are about to eat today, baby. But no ice cream, though. I mean, I had my ice cream already, so I'm going to take a little break from that for probably a couple of months. You know, not that's too long. Maybe a month. Anyway. you got to stick to it to get to it.